I'm with Joni Harms, uh, Western music singer and performer, rancher, cowgirl. Which would you like to be known as? All of the above is nice, uh, and don't forget mom. mom too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm. I'm. Uh, my family absolutely comes first and foremost because um, I come from a long line of of Harmses out on the ranch that was homesteaded by my great great grandfather in 1872, actually, and. And I have really found with my experiences in Nashville and all the things in, in the music business is that it's really something that is could be here today and gone tomorrow. And it's, it's uh, enjoy it and, and love it while you're able to do it. And But, um, you know, I guess that's really, Paul, why I never even moved to Nashville is I always felt that I wanted to have the stability that I had there at home and, and then try and pursue my music from the ranch and go, you know, it only took me a day to get to Nashville when I was recording for Capitol Records. I'd go in and and really pretty much that way still wherever I'm needing to go play. I mean, we've got the, the airplanes and I'm, I mean, I'd. I don't enjoy flying, but I certainly do it out of necessity uh, just about once a week these days. So, um, so certainly family foremost, but, but um, songwriter, singer, entertainer, um, good person, friend, all very important to me. What do you like best about uh, performing? Well, the fans, I would have to say, are the, the best of all. I mean, it just is a really... When, you know, I find a certain amount of pleasure out of writing a song and performing it, but to make it um, turn into a record or uh, and then have you folks play it on the radio and have people call in and say they like it or go perform it live and uh, see smiles come on people's faces, that's the best of all. How did you get started in playing Western music as opposed to country, and what's the difference between Western and country? Because we often hear the term country and Western thrown around. Well, I don't know that there used to be really that much of a difference, but I certainly grew up on a ranch listening to Bob Wills and, and you know, really just Western music all the way around. My whole family plays and sings, and we made our own music for years. I mean, I started singing at four or five years old and going to rodeos, and, and you know, uh, it was really all I ever knew. And then I, I still like some country, as long as it's more the traditional kind. Because uh, really, you know, some of the, the the music I make on my records, I would almost call more traditional country, you know, like the After All song and some of those. But but my music, I think the key thing about Western music is it, it really has soul and, and a story. And um, certainly twin fiddles and steel guitar still exist in Western music. And, uh, you know, two steps and a waltz and swing and, and you don't hear that on country radio anymore. So it's it's kind of sad that that you can't have a little of all of it on there, but really it seems to have divided and now there is the Western music, which is just as I spoke of, and then there's the, the country music, which is um, really more almost a pop-ish sounding thing of today and and it has its audience but I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we can continue to see our western music grow as a category again too and, and get it out there more as an option for people to listen to if that's what they like um this is something I'm gonna edit <laughs> tell me a little bit about uh, ranching what's uh, what's the tie-in between you and the songs you sing and ranching and uh, being a cowgirl well, since I love to write my own music, I obviously write a lot of things that I know about, you know, and, and, and see in my everyday world. And uh, so ranching is, is very much um, part of where I get my ideas and, and the family and the background that existed, uh, you know, out there for years on, on the home place in Oregon. But um, I get a lot of ideas wherever I go. I mean, just listening to what people say or watching what they might do uh, gives me ideas for songs sometimes. And so I, I really never know where I'm going to get the next idea for a song. I just try to keep a little recorder like you've got here with me and, and keep a notepad, at, you know, all the time so it's kind of handy. And usually wouldn't have time to write the whole song when I get an idea, but try and write down the title or at least the idea. So you do you try to avoid Nashville whenever possible? Oh no, I love Nashville. I love Nashville. I play the Grand Old Opry as often as I can. Uh, I've had the pleasure of doing that 13, 14 times now. So it's it's a big thrill, and they still love Western music out there. Of course, I still record in Nashville, and a lot of my co-writing buddies live there that I've met 
you know, through the years of, because I did the country music scene in the early 90s, too. I had a deal on Capitol Records. I had a couple songs that were in the top 20 on the Billboard charts. Um, it was just, seems like the more popish country music got, the more that I knew it wasn't quite right for me. And, and that's when the, when the thing happened for me at Warner Western, and I thought I had really certainly found my home then. And we recorded the Cowgirl Dreams album, and, and I used a wonderful producer in Nashville by the name of Biff Watson and wrote uh, several of the songs with my co-writing buddies there. And so Nashville is, is always going to have a very special uh, spot in my heart, and I, I hope to always be able to, to return there. I am from the West, and I love to visit pretty much any place that, that wants to hear Western music. But, but, you know, I spent, like I almost call them my college years in Nashville. I mean, Jimmy Bowen, thank you very much, buddy. I mean, he really was, was great to me. And, and, uh, and signed me on to Capitol Records, introduced me to a lot of the writing co-writers that I still write with, and, and boy, did I ever learn a lot, I mean, just about the whole music industry from, from that whole experience. So so I have really, really nothing, you know, bad to say about Nashville. I wish it would give uh, Western music a little bit more of a, of a chance again, but, but hopefully that's coming. Have you ever performed back east in New York? Or well, I'm getting my first opportunity to do that here this new year. It's funny you should ask that, Paul. I'm very excited. I have not performed in New York as of yet, but um, have been invited to be part of the uh, show that's coming up at Carnegie Hall on May 30th. And I'm um, obviously just ecstatic about that. It's going to be a show uh, with, with several great Western artists. Um, the Prey Rose Wranglers are putting it together with Thomas Etheridge, but the uh, Sons of the San Joaquin and... and uh, Oh, goodness, Johnny Western, Barry Ward, um, myself, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be really, really, Mickey Dawes is going to be there. It's going to be a, a real treat to to take Western music to Carnegie Hall and see how, how we can get folks to react there. I think you will. I think you'll get a very positive reaction. I hope so. We're sure looking forward to it all this time. Do you still have time to do uh, ranching back in Oregon? Yes, we do. We still we still have some cattle and horses, and then um, we lease out uh, quite a bit of our property to some Christmas tree growers now. And so we have the. This is a busy time of year for us. We have all the trees starting to be harvested already and shipped all over the world, really, from our place. And so it's it's pretty neat to see that happen too. And then uh, my mom and dad still live on the ranch, and so I certainly love to be there for them as much as I can because they did so much for me through the years of, of trying to get to be in the music business and also um, doing the rodeo circuit thing. And I was several different Rodeo Queen titles, and they took me to all those different shows and, and just supported me for, for years doing that. So I want to be there for them. And then, like I said, oh, Luke is four and Olivia is seven. So they're there, and then and then Jeff tries to keep it all together. My husband, when when we're when we're all over the place like I've been lately, so uh, home is still extremely important to me, and and I I can only be on the road so long before I really crave getting back there. And then I'll get home, and I'll be home a few days, and then I got to get back out on the road too. So as long as it's a happy in between, that seems to work the best. Well, you know, one thing about your records is that uh, there's always that cowgirl feel or cowboy feel to it or cow person feel to the music and it comes right through your music well i guess it would be hard for me not to be able to do that because that really is who i am and how i feel about what i want to say and you know i'm certainly not opposed to recording outside material but i just love to write so much myself too and uh, so it's just a it's, it's, I think it really does come through, and, and through the last couple of records I've been able to make from the photography that's been, you know, most, I don't know if you knew that, but most, really, all of the, the, the photos that have been taken in there have been taken out at the ranch and my home surroundings, and and so I really feel like the consumer, when they pick up a Joni Harm CD, at least after all in the Cowgirl Dreams one, are really seeing me. I mean, from the songs that I've written on it to how they've been produced and recorded, certainly to the pictures that they're seeing from, you know, how my life is out there on the ranch every day. So I really feel like I'm giving them the real Joni Harms. Joni, is there anything else you'd like to say to the people of uh, New York and elsewhere who might be listening in terms of your music and what you hope for it? Well, I just don't plan to go anywhere. I want to keep doing this for as long as people will, will, will listen and, and keep trying to get more people aware that Western music does exist. And I thank you so much for the folks that are listening and already are aware of it and would just maybe ask them to, to spread the word if they can, if they, if they enjoy it and like it. And, and hopefully we'll see a bunch of them at, at Carnegie Hall. Thank you, John. I should write this down. 
Hey, this is Joni Harms, and you're listening to Paul Aaron, my buddy, at the Cowboy Joe's Radio Ranch Western Swing and Cowboy Music Show on WB.